It's now my pleasure to turn today's presentation, Sign and Microsoft Teams for Education, Creating a Modern Document Hub, over to your first presenter, Sarah Linderman, Product Marketing Manager with Adobe Document Cloud. Sarah, you have the floor. Thanks, Phil, and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for giving us this time today. We're excited to be here and talk to you and address your questions and hopefully teach you some exciting things about how Sign and Microsoft Teams work together in the education space to help you create what we call a modern document hub. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of an intro and then I'll join you later in the presentation. Um, I also have two of my colleagues from uh, fellow colleagues from Adobe Product Marketing on the line, Kim and Francesco, you'll be hearing from them. And we're also joined by Jill Sitnik from Microsoft, who's on their education team. So thanks so much to my fellow presenters and um, you'll be hearing from them very soon. All right, best place to start is just giving you an overview of what this session is intended to do, as well as it kind of how it fits into the overall um, webinar series that we've put together for sign in education. Um, so we, we do have a, a bunch of on-demand material. If you're interested, we always make everything on-demand. Um, you can see that we have things like going paperless with Adobe Sign, a great way to get started. Um, we have a, a voice of the customer series that we just uh, just kicked off this year, actually back in August, where you can hear actually from a faculty member at the University of Arizona about how she's been using the Sign solution. Um, we have a session about Adobe Sign in Workday. Um, coming up in October, we're going to have another Voice of the Customer session that is going to focus on Portland State. And then most importantly, of course, today is going to be, again, about Adobe Sign in Microsoft Team. So I'll kind of get us kicked off and set the stage and provide a little bit of context. Um, and then I'm going to slide it over to Jill, who is going to talk to you about Adobe and Microsoft, that very specific um, collaboration that we have in place um, and then Kim is going to walk you through kind of the document lifestyle life cycle and kind of how we think about Adobe sign for Microsoft Teams how that all works um, and then we'll also have a demo from, from Francesco and then we will wrap things up before I dive into the actual content I wanted to kick us off with a very quick poll so you see two questions up here on the screen. One, just a great, a great start is getting a sense of who's in the room with us. Um, what types of departments are you working in at your um, educational institution? Um, and then the second question is just a, a general open-ended question about what you are here to get from today. Um, what do you wanna learn about? What do, you, what do you want to discover? I'll just leave this up here for a moment. All right, so a lot of IT admin, some procurement, some HR, not surprised that it's mostly IT. If you typed in other, I'm always just curious, feel free to kind of, you can you can just type it into the open-ended field on the quick poll for the second question. If you typed other, what, um, what specific department are you in? All right, and you're here to, let's see, learn about pre-authorizations, contract signatures, broadening your knowledge, sign integration and procurement uses, of course. Okay, this is great. These are all questions that we're gonna be addressing. So um, thanks so much. Feel free to continue populating those answers as I move us onward in the presentation. So when it comes to schools and you think about technology, obviously most of the focus is um, on, on this term called digital literacy, promoting digital literacy in the classroom, obviously improving your student outcomes. That's clearly where the focus should be. But to do that successfully, you really have to think about the full digital transformation journey at your school, and that includes the entire business of running a school. And so Adobe, we've partnered with Microsoft to create a set of tools that are really designed to help schools, whether K-12 or higher education, do just that. And we think there are three kind of big benefits to the set of integrated tools that we're able to provide. One is that it helps your staff work in a single location. So our integrations, which are designed to work right out of the box without any complicated, uh, complicated complex integration uh, applications, enable to, you to use uh, Adobe's creative tools, our PDF capabilities, our eSign workflows in the Microsoft environment that your staff is already used to working within so that they don't have to awkwardly jump around between apps. And obviously this provides a lot of time savings and just makes people more productive and makes them easier to do their jobs. 
The second benefit is that it also creates more seamless, more efficient ex uh, experiences, again, for the staff that's initiating workflows, as well as for the end signers, because they're then able to access documents and sign them from any device, anytime, anywhere. And their third benefit is that naturally this means that you can get more out of your IT investment. Um, everything is running on and can be deployed from Azure and your Microsoft admin console. And on the Adobe side, all the integrations, as I mentioned, are included. So there's no extras that are involved. Today's webinar, as you know, it's all about how Sign and Microsoft Teams can help your school, what I, what I call it a, a modern document hub. So the thing to think about here is that it's not just about e-signatures. It's really about this full holistic process of transforming the life cycle of a document. That's what happens to documents before and after the signature process, which given uh, Acrobat um, Adobe's PDF capabilities, Sign is really uniquely equipped to handle. So if you think about it, it starts with capturing or creating your document, whether that be a COVID testing screener that you might be sent, uh, sending home to parents or new hire paperwork. Adobe Sign can quickly help you turn the paper, the Microsoft Office document or PDF into a fillable, signable form, which you can easily modify and easily edit for future reuse. And then from there, you can send them out for the e-signature with really just a single click and your recipients again can sign them from anywhere using a web browser or mobile device. And the great thing is, is that all of your documents are then protected with very strict security measures and you can access, track, and manage them from anywhere in real time. And that's something that's not even really depicted from a visual standpoint on this slide and is maybe one of the most important things because as we know, when you're trying to retrieve documents or make sure that it has been correctly signed, that can be kind of a pain in the butt. And by working within this uh, environment here, you can really alleviate that pain point. This approach that I just talked through you can really deploy that to document life cycles all across your campus. Um, it works really well for operational workflows like vendor agreements, um, any procurement contract related paperwork. It works well for staff management needs like onboarding forms. And of course, it's also valuable for student facing workflows, things that might not be running through your SIS like course management forms when it comes to higher education or release and IEP forms at the K-12 level. And in all of these cases, using paper-based forms and wet signatures, as you know, it requires tons of time, requires a lot of cross-coordination between departments and individual and literal legwork. And by going paperless with Adobe Sign, you can simplify those routing procedures, you can reduce trips to office or campus, you get things accomplished much faster. And of course, when it's embedded within the Microsoft environment, it just amplifies all of that because it just has everyone working from one seamless system. Um, and it creates a better experience for the whole campus community really all the way around. Getting more specific about the sign in Microsoft integration, we've built this pretty expansive set of integrations that span across the full Microsoft stack. Um, one thing to note that I don't think I mentioned before is that sign is actually Microsoft's only preferred e-signature solution. And we've made sure that we've fully customized it to work within that environment. All the APIs and connectors are included and they're ready to go. So this means you can bring Sign into all the apps that your staff is using on the daily, like SharePoint, OneDrive, Word, Outlook, and of course Teams, which we're going to focus on today. Um, on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Jill, who works on Microsoft's education team, to really speak to the power of Teams. Jill, I will bring this slide up Hello. and let you take it away. There you go, Sarah. I actually, I moved it. And hi, everybody. My name is Jill Sitnik. I am an education industry executive with Microsoft. I spent 20 years at K-12 and my last six years at Microsoft. And I'm thrilled to be here today because not only do I support uh, certain parts of the country, I also run a partner program. And Teams has become the place for all of my shortcuts to get things done. So I'm kind of excited to talk about that today. And I think what's also really important is that a lot of people are thinking Teams and COVID world as it's just kind of online meetings and chats, 
but it's really a place where you get to connect what you want to connect and specifically today how easy it is to go ahead and connect Adobe products to your Teams interface. And of course, no matter what you put into Teams, you have Microsoft's compliance and security uh, running 24-7. And because of that security, I can't turn around and say to you, hey, these are our customers A, B, C, D who are always running Teams. But what I can tell you is some of our momentum. We have a huge number of daily active users. We have, you can just look at the statistics there. I see 30 billion collaboration minutes in a single day. I think sometimes during some of these days, I'm half of those minutes. The point being that Teams is becoming even more of a platform than it was six months ago than it was a year ago. People are realizing that it is a communication tool, but it's also the tool that everything can connect to and it can make me have fewer clicks throughout the day. And that's actually going to be one of the themes that I talk about. So obviously, stay connected to your colleagues, to your students, to your stakeholders, collaborate, I can chat, I can quickly call, I can do all of that video stuff that everyone is so used to at this point. But most importantly, I saw a lot of people in IT, I saw some people in HR, I saw some people in finance. You have other operational processes like I do running my partner program that I have to take care of. I have to deal with approvals, I have to deal with budgeting, I have to deal with uh, asks from different stakeholders. How do I make sure that all of that is in one place and I'm not going to three different browsers, two different emails, and three different Teams chats? I go ahead and I do that by integrating things into Teams. I'm even going to wind up giving you one of my hints as we move forward because we all know time management, it just gets eaten up. If you've got repetitive tasks, if you can cut something down that's a three-click process to a one-click process, that really helps because we all know how often we're meeting. You know, hopefully we've all turned our meetings to 25 minutes and 55 minutes to give us a little bit of extra time. But the way the days are broken up, we really need to work on decreasing the number of repetitive tasks and or decreasing the amount of time it takes for those repetitive tasks to be done. So let me give you a little hint. I actually have my own team. So it's literally just my team. You have to have two owners. So I have one of my colleagues as a secondary owner. She completely ignores it. And that's where I put, as a project manager and a program manager, all of my links. So for instance, if you look at this screen and it says create and add power apps within a Teams channel, and it's pointing to the real estate right in the middle of the Teams area, that particular, I actually have a power app for approvals for my training program. I get to see in that channel, right in that real estate, what's been approved and what hasn't. Then you see the second item where it says incorporate the right project management tools to fit your needs. So along the top of every team, you get to personalize what you need. So whether you need to add a website, whether you need to add a particular program, there are tons and tons of integrations for other project management pieces of software. You're able to go ahead and do that. And then you see highlight key tools and news with institutional app integrations. I like to call that particular area of Teams my own personal workspace. I'm not sure if people realize, but you can organize those particular, I'm going to say the word tab or graphics the way you want. So for instance, we have the Cortoso <laughs> graphic listed. That's Microsoft's demo place, our demo company. Uh, in real life, I actually have my Microsoft internal hub link right there. So you're able to take your institutional places you go, again, reducing clicks. You know, I might be in my internal SharePoint site two or three times a day. Boom, it's right there and it shows up in the Teams interface. It's super helpful. And then specifically, vendors like Adobe have done a phenomenal job of creating integrated apps that fit right into your Teams interface. So you see, if you want, you can keep that app at the bottom, but if you're like, hey, I'm doing a ton of Adobe Sign stuff today and you want to move that to the top of the screen, you can do that. It's super easy to grab those apps. See at the very bottom choice there, it says add Adobe productivity apps from the team store. When you click on that apps icon and just search for Adobe, you're going to see that Adobe has created for you Adobe Sign for Teams, 
Adobe Creative Cloud, and Adobe Acrobat for Microsoft Teams. And they just slide right into the Microsoft Teams interface. You go ahead and authenticate with your institution's uh, credentials, and you're good to go. And at that point, Teams becomes even more of a central place where you can get everything done. And like I, I, my, my own personal goal is fewer clicks. And so with that, I'm going to pass this over to Kim. Kim, are you with us? I am. How's everyone today? Yay! Thank you so much, Jill. I really appreciate that wonderful introduction. I love hearing about Microsoft Teams and the Adobe integrations. What I think is really important um, just to uh, continue what Jill was saying was adding these apps to your Microsoft solutions are really easy. You simply go into the Microsoft App Store store and install these apps as you like. Um, and all of the integrations are included with your Adobe Sign, Acrobat, or Creative Cloud license. So they come to you at no um, extra cost uh, for your school or your educational institution. Um, one of the things that I love about Adobe Sign is that it's so simple. It's so easy. Um, all you need to do is just sign and go. This is something that can be used on um, at, at any time, on any advice, on any device. And it's really, really quick and easy to send. Um, if you look at the Adobe solutions one by one, Adobe Sign is an e-signature solution that provides the simplest signing experience for both the sender as well as the signer. And as it was, um, as Sarah said earlier, it's the Microsoft's preferred e-signature solution. It's the only preferred Microsoft e-signature solution with pre-built integrations that run directly inside of Microsoft. So it's really easy to deploy and to use. You don't have to jump out of any other application to be able to use this. That's how simple and easy that it is. And it finally, it, Adobe Sign comp uh, complies with the broadest range of security standards all around the world. So you don't have to worry about um, security or compliance because all of that is taken care of. Um, when we think about uh, signing papers, right? Paper, it's expensive. It's a manual process. It's it's time that is wasted. It, it, it really inhibits you to run the school efficiently run your uh, higher ed, run your college or university eventually, uh, excuse me, <laughs> efficiently. It's expensive. It's time consuming. It's wasteful. It's not, it's not green having all this paper all over the place. And you spend too much time bouncing in and out of applications and trying to find out the status of that document that was sent out that needed an approval or that needed um, an, a signature. If you think about the time that's wasted, it's error prone, it's hard to manage. Things like that causes delays. And delays happen when documents get routed to the wrong person or when people are out of office or just the right documentation isn't provided. Oftentimes it's hard to track, hard to store, hard to keep things secure. But, but unfortunately, at this time, 80% of school for, forms are partially paper-based. And it's really time that we need to stop focusing on that paper, go green, and it's time to start to stop pushing paper and it's time for Adobe Sign. All of you are, are doing wonderful things your IT, you're in the office, you are um, educators. It's really important to be able to get things done in the matter of days rather than weeks. If you're an educator, um, if you're a teacher, uh, you have to route your IEP forms to your staff, to your teachers and to parents to get them completed. That takes time. And instead of, of running around trying to get prepared for an IEP meeting, um, and trying to figure out what paper needs to be signed, it's perfect to have that right in front of you on your desktop right then and there. You can send this out on one device um, and you have the ability to manage that all in one little area. Uh, if you needed a signature for your entire district to, to be able to sign all of a click of a, a button, um, I saw some people that were on, the, uh, on this call that are HR. So how easy would that be to be able to help with new, new hires 
or faculty members to complete paperwork or onboarding. To be able to do that quickly in a, an efficient, timely manner means everything. So the whole point of this is like, we want to have interrupted experiences. We want to decrease that time that's wasted. Um, and with Adobe Sign, you have 100% digital, uh, digital signing experience. It's 28% faster. All of these um, products are fully integrated in Teams. Being able to save two hours when it comes to those signatures, getting those quickly and efficiently. You have automated workflows. I saw work, somebody put workflows in, in the chat today about what they do. You have the ability to automate those workflows. And then uh, again, I cannot emphasize this enough, being able to manage the legality and make sure that things are secure, that they're accurate and that you're under uh, compliance you have 30% error uh, reduction pertaining to that. So that's also something that's super helpful. When you look at um, Adobe Sign for uh, Teams, <clears throat> excuse me, ooh, it's talking a little too fast. I wanted to let you guys know that when we talk about Adobe Sign um, and Teams integrations in particular, the goal for this integration is to have only one place to go, resulting in one Again, resulting in a simple, easy one application, resulting in more time for productivity as you do not have to go and toggle between different apps or search for information. I think it's really important to also note that there's no extra software and it does not come with any additional cost or extra cost. Everything happens inside of Teams. You have the ability to bring Teams and Office 365 together so that you can easily find, share, request signatures within the interface all in one spot. And Microsoft also embed Adobe Sign within the new Microsoft Teams approval engine. So it's available there as well as without you having to download anything additional as well. I think it's really important to make things so simple and easy when it comes to Microsoft Teams. Um, if you also look, um, we have the how important we have Microsoft and Adobe and our uh, unique differentiators, right? We're world-class document workflows. And again, can't emphasize enough, Microsoft is the preferred e-signature solution when it comes to this. Um, we've been working together for the last four years to bring Adobe capabilities from Creative Cloud, Document Cloud, to the Experience Cloud within Microsoft solutions. And Adobe Document Cloud, Adobe Sign is the only end-to-end -end digital document platform that you can leverage within your Microsoft solutions. So we were just um, awarded Microsoft Partner of the Year in 2021 when it comes to apps and solutions for Microsoft Teams. That shows you how close that we work together, how much we're willing to work together um, to make this a successful relationship, not just for Adobe and Microsoft, it's for our customers, it's for our clients, it's for you, it's for higher ed, it's for K through 12. These things are important. Um, obviously better and more integrations. We have already 35 plus integrations that are all included in your license. And again, can't emphasize enough, there's no need to leave Teams to use Adobe Sign. These are important instances to make sure that people are doing things um, when it comes to uh, working smoothly and easily and simply. Um, we want to empower your students, right? We've got at higher ed. We want to make sure that they are empowered through co course enrollment and be able to add and drop processes, uh, add and drop classes instead of it taking days uh, excuse me, instead of it taking a bunch of weeks for a, a, a child to or a, a teenager or an adult to drop a class, it should only be taking a few days. We want to speed up the flow of, of critical funding by sending alumni donation forms with a click of a, of a button. How many of us wants to increase our endowment fund? How much easier would it be to be able to do that if you have um, these products integrated together with Adobe and Microsoft. One of, also the great thing is that it's hosted on Azure. Um, we, we have the ability to set, set this up via Microsoft 365 Admin Console to be able to standardize deployment and management. And we have the ability to uh, be able to run globally for, again, best-in-class security. 
We also have these really great case studies, Clark County um, in Nevada, the results of them using Adobe Sign and Microsoft Teams together, it, it resulted in 30,000 monthly documents that were expected to be processed through Adobe Sign. It accelerated that time with as little as 10 minutes, even with multiple uh, signers, and it reduced paper waste by 75% just by going through paperless workflows. So very quick and easy and efficient. And again, can't emphasize enough, it is green. So I'm gonna pan this over now over to Francesco. Um, he is, I, I like to fondly call him my brother from another mother. And you'll be able to see because he's Italian, yay. Um, a, a Francesco, my brother, um, can't wait for you to do this wonderful Adobe Sign and uh, Microsoft Teams demo so you can show us how this works. Thank you, Kimberly. Hello, everyone. This is Francesco. So let me just share my screen. Okay. Please, team, let me know if you don't see my screen. You should be seeing a purple screen. Microsoft Teams, Adobe Sign Demo. So uh, I feel like we covered Adobe Sign in Teams quite a bit. We mentioned, uh, the team mentioned all the key aspects of Adobe Sign in Teams. And I'm sure you uh, you realize that we mentioned that it's very, very easy to use. And luckily for me and you watching this demo and me running it, it is easy to use. So it'll be, uh, pretty straightforward, I think, for you to to understand how it works and to and to follow um, as I go through. So let's look at sending and signing an agreement with Adobe Sign inside of Teams. So here, our user, she already has Adobe Sign in Teams. You can see it here on the on the left rail. I'm going to show you at the end how she did that. Um, Jill touched on it that it's very easy to find the apps on. App source, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And so she has already um, Adobe Sign added. So she clicks on it. And then at the top, she's going to click on the Adobe Sign tab. She's going to sign in into Adobe Sign. And then under Send for Signature, she's going to start uh, creating the signature request. So she starts by entering the email of the recipient. You can see that she can choose there on the on the right of the signature the authentication method. So she chooses email for this one. Then she enters a name for the agreement. Sorry for the flickering. I don't know what, what is happening. Must be, must be my internet. And then a message for the signer, William. She can then choose a file. And she can choose it from her computer or a library of files or she can pick a template. In this case, she chooses a file from her computer. So she goes, find the file, it's called Contoso NDA. She adds the file. So you can see that on the top, uh, she can actually add additional signature uh, there, additional recipients, uh, because you know, an agreement or, or, or a letter might, could, be, could have you know, required signatures of, let's say both parents, for example. And so she can in include additional signatures. And also with that toggle, she can decide on the order of the signatures. Uh, maybe there is an order. You want the first signer to sign before the second and so on, or there's no, or the order doesn't matter. So she, she can choose that. She also has other options there on the right where she can pass or protect the document so that if it's shared around, uh, only if you have the password, you can, you can read it and view it. She can set reminders and pick the recipient's language. Okay, so she's ready to send it. Once she does that, she receives a confirmation message here in Teams. And so the uh, agreement now is being received um, you know, by, the, by the signer in his, in his or her inbox. And um, our user here is able to access that um, that agreement, that document at any time within Teams. So she can access she can access Adobe Sign 
through a channel as well. So as she uh, click on Teams, you see on the left rail there, she can actually add the Adobe Sign tab to a channel and make it more visible to all the people that are working together on a channel. So what she does is she clicks the plus sign there on top and she adds the Adobe Sign tab in this case. So she, she searches for the tab, Adobe Sign, she adds the tab, save it to the channel. And here she can do exactly the same thing. Sanford signature and we saw out that it's done. Okay, now let me give you a quick preview of a capability that is not out yet, but it's coming soon, um, early next year. Now it's in, in the closed beta program. We're, we're gathering amazing feedback, but I wanna show it to you because it's coming soon and it's a really, a game-changing capability. We call it Live Sign. And this allows for signing ceremonies, so signing documents face-to-face, -face, right? So imagine a family before coming to uh, the administration, the admission office, and, and offer them that amazing experience of visiting your school and signing um, a document together. Now you can do it face-to-face -face remotely through uh, a Teams me video meeting. And so what you do is at first you set up the meeting. So she goes on the calendar in Teams. She schedules a meeting. So a new meeting there up right. She creates the meeting just like you do today when you create a meeting. Title the meeting, add, um, you invite people, a short description of the meeting. Oh, sorry again for the flickering. And so when the time comes, she joins the meeting and she finds the attendee. John has joined the meeting, the team's meeting. And again, John is not part of um, the school or the institution. He doesn't have to have a team's instance. He's an outside uh, person. This could be you know, a parent and he receives an invitation through email. They're gonna click and open the team's meeting in a browser. So they don't require any type of license. So there on, so during the meeting, she's going to click on the chat um, on, the, on the top um, rail on the meeting chat. And then the ellipses, as you see the three dots. So she's going to call out the, what we call a meeting, Microsoft call a meeting extension. So the Adobe Sign meeting extension. She's going to add this extension, the life sign extension to the meeting. And now she wants to select the agreements, the document documents associated with the attendee. So she starts by entering the email of the attendee, John, and Adobe Sign is going to pull up all the documents associated with John. Uh, in this case, there's only one. She clicks on the document. Once again, she makes sure that all the information is correct. The agreement is the right one. Uh, the, the signer names, the emails are uh, all correct and all match. Then you see that Adobe Sign created um, a card inside the meeting chat where the signer, John, can click, uh, click on that button, review and sign and access the document. And so he does that and then he shares his screen. You can see here his view. He um, confirms that he's the person uh, with, the, with that email address. And then reviews the document right right there face to face with the with the sender and other people in the meeting too it doesn't have to be just two people here can sign in the different ways that i'm sure you know about you can type you can draw you can add an image or you can do it on mobile and that's it it's all set the signer receives a confirmation email in their inbox with a copy of the agreement or the document that they signed and uh, our user here, our Teams user, have access to that document, the signed document, directly through Teams um, under Adobe Sign. So very easy and transparent for everyone. Again, that capability is coming up. It's not yet available, but we're really close to make it public. Okay, now, in addition to sending per signature, another important aspect of Adobe Sign working in Teams is that you can manage and track the status of your agreements 
again, directly uh, within Teams. So our user, she's going to click on Adobe Sign again, the Adobe Sign app on the left rail. She's going to go under Adobe Sign tab on top. And now instead of send per signature, she's going to select the manage agreements tab. And so when she does that, she sees this dashboard where all the agreements associated with her are presented. She sees uh, all the ones that are in progress where people are still, um, they haven't signed yet. She can uh, get uh, kind of a quick view of uh, timeline and the status by clicking on the on the agreement. And she can also look at the activity. She can see if the agreement actually is being viewed even by the signer. She can also look at agreements that are waiting for her. So waiting for a signature. She can look at and she can sign from here. She can also look at agreement that have been completed. She can down, click on them, view and download directly through here. Imagine having hundreds or even thousands of agreements here for all your students. Obviously, you need a way to filter those agreements. Uh, you can filter based on the recipients, dates, or uh, the name of the, the agreements. Other important things that she can do from this tab, from the Manage Agreements tab, um, is templates. So she can actually create or access templates. So let's see how you create a template. She starts by entering a template's name. Again, sorry for the flickering. I don't know what's going on. You can add a file from your computer. She's going to choose a vendor agreement. She, can, she has a few options for the template, who can use it, uh, what type of template is going to be. And she can easily add signature blocks right in there and make that uh, plain document basically a fillable document. She can add um, form field and she can add a signature field um, to approve. And that's it, she created a template per uh, template library. In the same way, without leaving uh, the Manage Agreement tab, she can actually create web forms as well. You can create web forms for um, your intranet or even your school uh, website. You create a form right in here. The result is gonna be a URL that you can embed into your web page or your internal site and have uh, students or staff fill the form and you receive uh, all the completed uh, document. I want to go back for a second. I want to mention that you can also make a sign. So this name, mega sign, what does it mean? It means, and this is, I think it's very important for education. It means to send out agreements to multiple people, many, many people, the same agreement to many recipients. This is, you know, the, um, it's a great capabilities for sending forms to students, for example. You can send the same form to a thousand students and you'll get back each individual form signed by a different signer. So a very important use case. And you can do it again uh, from right here. Okay, this is something uh, cool you can do with Adobe Sign. Adobe Sign has a bot that you can call and ask question to. So let's go again to the Adobe Sign app. You're going to type your question in the in the text box. You're just going to type check status, for example. The bot is going to ask you what document are you looking for. You write the name of the document. And you can access the document or perhaps send a reminder if, it's, if you're waiting for the signature. You can also access the bot from the channel. So if we look at the left rail, we can see that she goes under uh, Teams, her Teams, or channels. She starts a new conversation at the bottom. She uh, calls Adobe, so add Adobe. She picks Adobe Sign. We can do it. We can do it with Adobe Creative Cloud app too, but we're going to do it with Adobe Sign here. And again, she starts um, asking the bot for the status of a document just like we did before. 
She can also chat directly with the bot. So doing in a channel, it's visible to everyone, which is great in certain, you know, in certain scenarios, you wanna keep everybody on, uh, let's say your, your uh, you know, admission team on the same page on certain documents. So you call the Adobe bot from there. Uh, but if you wanna have a, a personal a relationship, a personal chat with a bot, you can do it through a chat. Uh, and let me show you how. So you go under chat, you create a new conversation with, uh, with the Adobe SignBot. And here you can type, for example, show documents for others. And when you do that, the bot calls out all the documents that you have pending and clicking that arrow on the right, you can move like just like a carousel between all the documents that are waiting for signature. And you can also ask for documents that are um, for you, waiting for your signatures. And so you can sign again right there or you can download the agreement. Okay, finally, uh, I feel like this should almost, almost uh, have come at the beginning, but this is how you add the Adobe Sign app in Teams. You simply go, if you don't have team, Adobe Sign already in your Teams, you simply go on the apps um, kind of marketplace. You see there on the bottom left. And when you get there, you search for um, Adobe. You see the Adobe Sign results coming up, the purple icon. You click that. You can watch a video, you can read more details about what the app is about, you can, and then you add it. And once you add it, you're gonna have it uh, fully integrated inside of Teams. So if you do search for the Adobe sign or Adobe apps in Teams today and you don't see it, it's possible that the admin, your IT admin have not turned it on for you or as, um, just turn it off. Didn't allow third-party apps or, or certain third-party apps to to show on your uh, on your um, apps marketplace. But generally, it should be there. So if you don't see it, please let your IT admin know. Here you could do all the actions that we talked about, and that is it. Thank you so much for following along. I'm going to pass it back to the team. Am I muted? Perfect. Sorry, I muted myself so that my typing wasn't super <laughs> obnoxious. Um, there's just a couple more slides to cover off on before we move into the Q&A. What I really wanted to close off with was um, just talking through how this works actually in a, in a real life scenario. And specifically here, I wanna talk about how we worked with Iowa State University Foundation. Now the key use case for them was about alumni giving. So obviously that supports university students, faculty, buildings, programs, everything. Um, and as some of you may be quite familiar with, getting donation agreements approved and then processed and the funds distributed requires a large amount of paperwork and signed approvals from a lot of different stakeholders. And there's also a lot of compliance regulations that are involved. So in short, it's quite complicated. Uh, in this case, there is no room or desire to add more complexity. So it was very critical to the university to find an e-signature solution that was compatible with their already heavily embedded Microsoft environment. Um, so because Adobe Sign and DC uh, work naturally with Microsoft SharePoint and Teams and Power Automate, it really made that implementation process for them quite easy and it minimized the burden on their staff. And you can see by that quote that there that is there on the slide from Dave, who's the Senior Director of, of IT Operations for the Foundation, that Adobe Sign was really the only solution they found that was able to provide this opportunity for them. And it's worked out really beautifully. Uh, the staff can access all of their docs through SharePoint and through Teams, um, which offer up complete views of the agreement status without the need for time consuming data entry. So less admin work, fewer errors. Plus the staff can easily give donors quick status updates on demand. And the results are really impressive. Uh, the agreement turnaround time has been cut by an average of 13 days. And their printing volume, um, which Kim mentioned is so important right now, uh, is down 30%, which is saving money and, and it's obviously, it's better for the environment. That is my last bit. I'm going to close this out, close this out with just two final things. One uh, is a, a quick poll. Um, we're gonna transition here. All right, so two key questions up on the slide. One, 
how do you leverage Microsoft Teams? So just curious right now how you might be using that on your campus or your institution. And then secondly, what are some topics that you might like to see us address um, from Adobe perspective or Microsoft perspective or both for future events? We'd love to hear from you. So uh, the poll is open. Feel free to drop that down. All right. Feel free to keep, keep uh, dropping your answers in. I'm going to move us into giving a quick preview of some next steps before I open it finally, like I mentioned, to Q&A. So one, I just want to point out some resources that we have. Um, if you want to learn about Adobe Sign-In Teams, we have a link for that. If you would like to hear about other sign integrations, we have a link for that. And if you would like to get a little bit more specific on um, sign functionality, there is a link for that. Um, secondly, would encourage you to join any of our future webinars. We have one coming up on the 6th of October that will uh, let you hear from Portland State and how they've been using Sign. Um, on October 20th, we have a session that's devoted to kind of the implementation process of getting Sign up and running at your institution. And then November 10th is great for any colleagues you might have that are just trying to get a basic understanding of Adobe Sign overall. Um, if you want any more information beyond this, please feel free to drop your information over into the chat pod um, and we will reach out to you directly to to help you with that we'd be more than happy to do that um, and again one of the questions that came up very frequently was is this session being recorded and can i access it or send it to colleagues and yes for sure we will be sending that out um, after this event is wrapped up all right and that is it at this point i'm going to hand it over um, for q a so feel free to drop more questions into the chat pod and we will address them as best we can in the last 10 minutes. And anything that is not addressed, again, leave us your information and we can reach out directly to help you with that. Okay, Sarah, thank you. And thank you to all the presenters, great job. My name is Lori Strauss and I'm the National Sales Manager for K-12 and I'm gonna be monitoring the Q&A chat pod. So there are a lot of folks on the call and we've had a lot of great questions. So we're gonna ask some questions here, but I think we've been individually answering your questions as we've gone along here. Um, but let's start with a question for Francesco. One of our institutions had a question about Adobe Sign and asking if it is the same as Fill and Sign that they have in Acrobat DC, which could be part of their Creative Cloud entitlement. Yeah, good point. Yeah, good question. Um, well, I can see how it can be confusing. I mean, ultimately, they're all, they all have sign in their name. But so fill and sign, think about it as um, it's literally just adding a signature to, to a document. And that's it. Um, you're, there is no, um, there's no certificates associated with the signatures. There's no real uh, legal uh, value, um, you know, recognized by, by a legal institution or um, it, it's literally just, I don't want to call it a scribble, but it's a signature on a document. And so for certain use cases, perhaps that's enough. But when you're talking about legal documents, real documents, uh, you need Adobe Sign. Uh, and Adobe Sign, it's not just about the signature, as you've seen, it's about the workflow. It's about uh, sending it to multiple people. It's about integrating it into a, a workflow that touches on other applications. So it's really the signature piece is really the tip of the iceberg and is, you know, in the case of Acrobat with fill and sign, it's really literally just a signature affixed to, to a document. There's no, uh, there isn't all that value behind it. I hope that's, that clarifies. Thanks, Francesco. Another question is around um, the, does the recipient need to have Adobe Sign App installed in order to sign? Yeah, good. And, I guess it's, I can, I can answer that one as well. Um, yeah, super common question. Uh, no, so the short answer is no, only the sender. Great. And um, is there a way to send one document to multiple people? So for example, if you had like a student registration form that had to be filled out by many students, can you send the same document to many people? Is there an easy way to do that, Francesco? Yes, absolutely. It's what I briefly touch on with Megasign or sometimes called bulk sign. Um, yes, 
you can do exactly that. So you don't have to manually send it to a thousand people. You can just send it one time uh, to all those people that will receive a, obviously a blank document and they will be add their information, uh, fill all the uh, form fields that you added and then sign. So you'll get back an individual copy for, for each student. Okay, that's an add-on question. Does Adobe store my document once I use Adobe Sign and it's filled out and returned? Yeah, so it's a good question. It's um, Adobe uh, stores your document during the process of um, sending the document for signature. So it does uh, because it passes through our cloud, uh, it goes through our security system, etc. cetera. Um, but compared to other um, options that there's there are out there in the market, you can customize the length, the duration of the of the time that it spends in Adobe's cloud. It's not a fixed uh, length. Uh, maybe not in the education um, you know industry, but in, in in certain more regulated industry, it's important to 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 kind of tailor the length of that um, of that time um, in in Adobe's cloud. So you can do it. You can do it at Adobe's cloud. Okay. Um, how long does it take to add Adobe Sign to SharePoint and Outlook? I can take that one as well. It's as easy as adding it to Teams, just like just like I showed in the demo. Same process, very easy. It's just you go to the App Source Marketplace, you pick the the add-in, you add it in, you sign in with your Adobe Sign license and that's it it's going to be in your outlook it's on your sharepoint uh, so very easy great so there was a question about the difference in using teams and in using sharepoint um, and jill from microsoft answered the question but i'm not sure if it was published to everybody but the way jill described it is to think of sharepoint as a repository for documents and processes where teams is used to communicate and get things faster so um, SharePoint's working on the back end, so you can look at documents that are stored in Teams on its SharePoint home. So hopefully that answers that question since you had just mentioned SharePoint, Francesco. I wanted to put that one out there. Um, let's see, here's a question that I think Kimberly can answer. Why is Adobe Sign better than the uh, other e-signature platforms? Well, one of the reasons or many reasons is the depth and breadth of Adobe's integrations into Microsoft, um, their products. So Microsoft Teams, Office 365, Dynamics, Azure. Um, this really allows for the best employee experience with e-signature ca capabilities and how it's built right into um, familiar user interfaces and workflows and Really, it's so beneficial for easy end user onboarding. It's faster, it's more efficient, um, and it lowers the IT burden. So those are one of many reasons why Adobe Sign is, is better than other e-signatures. Okay, that's great. Um, thank you. Let's see, there are a lot of questions. So again, if you have any more um, questions will stay on for a little while after, but we are going to publish this recording and hopefully we'll gather your contact information so that we can get in touch with you after um, this session. But um, let's see, when purchasing, is there a limit to the number of documents you cre can create or is it unlimited? And so in that question, we, we assume that you're referring to the number of documents you could send out for signature. And if that's the case, um, the institution would have access to a specific number of transactions that were purchased. So we license by transaction or the number of signatures that you can send. Um, for efficiency, what I've seen in K-12, so let's say they were a back to school packet that a student would receive, that maybe there would be five documents for a student to, to sign. Um, for efficiency, when you're sending out to um, a recipient, you would attach the five documents into the one transaction or quote unquote, creating a packet. That's the most efficient way um, to send multiple documents to the same signer um, for signature. 
Um, somebody asked here about um, cost, um, and so we'd love to have a conversation with you. I mentioned we license by transaction, and so we would like to um, find out and hear more from the use cases within your institution, um, whether it's holistic or departmental, we definitely would like to have that conversation with you. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a, well, if it would be Francesco and if you can answer this, but does sign offer, I'm sorry, um, does Adobe sign require recipients to have an Adobe ID or to be credentialed in some way to Adobe? Uh, not recipients, yeah. So it would be, it would be you know, anyone without an Adobe ID can um, can sign. Okay, that's great. Um, and let's see, here's one about, uh, let's see, there's a couple questions around Microsoft. Can you add dynamic fields from a CSV or other data source to send bulk documents with signers? And um, the answer to that is yes, and we um, can publish the link to that um, for, for bulk sending. I'm gonna answer just maybe one or two more questions and then um, I'm gonna turn it back to you, Sarah, to close. Um, let's see. Um, will live sign be accessible for mobile user Teams apps upon release? I'm not sure, Francesco, if you know the answer to that or? It's a very good question. Um, it's not confirmed. Um, Adobe Sign is, is getting a, a major revamp in, in Teams. And yeah, it's really going to impress you. The UX UI, it, the new UX UI is amazing. So, and it includes a completely refreshed mobile experience for Adobe <laughs> Signing Teams. Um, Live Sign should be accessible uh, for mobile users. Um, it should be. Uh, but it's not confirmed 100% at this point. Okay, thank you. And the last question um, is around reporting. So um, can you run reports to track who has signed and who has not, and can you set reminders? And um, I can answer that. Um, the answer is yes, that we do offer that functionality. And um, with the integration, you're gonna receive notifications directly within Teams. But if you have, say, five users that you set up in your workflow, whether they're horizontal or vertical, and maybe there's one last signer who has not signed, you can actually send them a reminder um, and you can set that up within within the console to you know be weekly, daily, just um, to ensure the complete um, the completion of the document. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Sarah to, um, to close. Thanks so much, Lori, and thank you to all my co-presenters. Um, I appreciate all of the questions that everyone signed in. I think we were kind of fast and furious on trying to address everything, and hopefully we got most of them covered. Um, I know that we collected email addresses and contact information for a few specific follow-ups. If there are any more, drop them in, and we will be sure to get in touch. Um, and to the question again about is this recorded, it is, and you will receive a recap email post-event. So thank you everyone for your time and uh, so appreciate it. Have a great, have a great day. Thanks so much.